Shalom Aleikum, this is the Christian Anarchist with yet another video. In this one, I will be refuting the creationist that's in jail that I honestly wish gets out sometime soon. Name is Kent Hovind. Let's listen to what Kent says. No, not about uh, New World Order, Illuminati, evolution, or why the King James Bible is the only uh, real reliable Bible that we should trust. No, he's going to be discussing theistic evolution. So, in other words, a Christian view towards the idea. So, let's hear what Kent has to say, and I'll have to stop and interrupt if I need to go over some points. question that frequently comes up is, what about theistic evolution? Couldn't God use evolution? Well, of course, that depends on what you mean by God. Let's, for the sake of the argument, just go with Yahweh and be done with it then, shall we? So, what do you mean by God? The God that would use a process like evolution would be cruel, wasteful, and retarded. So, why would that be if he would be cruel, wasteful, and retarded? It is not the God of the Bible, that's for sure. It's not in the character of God to use an evil, mean process like evolution. What makes evolution a mean process? I mean, do elaborate on that for me. Evolution, where bazillions of animals have to die, so it's because a bazillion animals had to die? Was it mean of God to drown all the people in the, the flood that you believe in? I believe in a, a, a local flood which still killed a lot of people. And I find that to be very just and good of God. I found the wars that he had committed and, at, and ordered for people to be slaughtered was righteous because that's all in God's character and name. And now you're saying if God would have used evolution to create us, that by doing so that involves death, now he's not even considered that's not good? Who are you to define what God considers good? God is merciful. Evolution is cruel. It's not merciful. The weakest is destroyed in evolution, not protected. Yeah, you're right. God is merciful. God is, you know, forgiving. But, when it was definitely in the time of the Old Testament, there had to have been vengeance. That's definitely why we also needed a Savior. Jesus died and paid for the sins that we should have taken. We should have been the one on that cross. And, I don't know, maybe you don't preach that? I haven't heard your sermons? But if you don't preach that that's why we need, that if you preach that, if you don't, if you think that we don't deserve what was on the cross, if you think we don't deserve to be on that cross, I don't know what to tell you, to be honest with you. I'm surprised, too, that anybody would say, God used evolution. What kind of God do they have, anyway? He's mean, that's for sure. Was it mean for him to kill those people? Because he was just, in my view, that he sent the people to, he sent uh, those people to go kill the, the Amalekites and all that. He was also just to kill the people with the flood. He was also just in destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. So, was he not just in doing that? See, in evolution, billions of things have to die in order to make the process work. One animal evolves a little better than the rest, the rest of them have to die, or the new improved genes are swamped back into the gene code. They're lost. But there are people who teach, you know, theistic evolution. The Bible says God's way is perfect. He made it right the first time. Just to point out something, you're against the idea of a bunch of animals dying, but now all of a sudden you're okay with the idea. Oh, I mean, I don't know, you might agree with that we needed animal sacrifice. We did animal sacrifices back then instead of human sacrifices. And that's when Jesus came to, you know, be the sacrifice to end all the all the sacrifices. He was the he was the atonement. I'm just saying, man. I need to hear your points on these before you go 
making all these assumptions that, you know, animal death is bad when animal death, uh, according to the tradition, was the atonement until Jesus came and fulfilled the law. That specific verse that you're quoting doesn't say that his work is perfect and that he got it right the first time. It is simply saying he is the rock and his work is perfect for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right, he is. So it's also saying that whatever he does is just and right. So if he chose to create by evolution or young earth or old earth, he is just in doing so. If he chose to save people or if he chose to kill people, he is just and right in what he does. So I do not believe God would use evolution to get us here for several reasons. I think they're talking about a different God, okay? This is not the character of the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible doesn't do things that way, okay? The Bible says he made everything by his word and it was perfect. He made it all in six days. The Bible's real clear and he rested on the seventh day. And he finished his works from the foundation of the world. Note that when it says that kind of thing in Exodus, where he, where God made the earth in six days and then rests on the seventh, that is also being made for the metaphor of how we are to work. We work for six days and we rest on the seventh. And why on the seventh day? So that we can observe and worship God. So the Bible clearly teaches six days of creation rested the seventh day. Over and over it calls it the seventh day. And the Bible says real clearly that man brought death into the world. Okay, the Bible says in specifically Romans 5.12, which you bring up, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. I notice that you have some words highlighted when you bring these presentations up, but you don't have the word highlighted for upon all men. And I don't know if maybe you're actually doing that on purpose to mislead the audience, but I can't make those general assertions and assumptions. This is just what I think. But I think that what you're doing by not focusing on the entire context of this passage, you are deceiving people. And the Bible says we're made in God's image. So if the original created man was some kind of, you know, animal that slowly evolved, then what does God look like? You know, is he a baboon? thing to consider. I think it's a retarded God that can't make it right first time. He's not worthy of worship, that's for sure. And it certainly, number four, nullifies the need for the death of Christ. And fifthly, and most importantly probably, there's no evidence for evolution anyway. Okay, well I can try to just say, you know, I'll agree to disagree on the evidence thing. Let's say this, there is no ev evidence for it. The same thing can go for, you know, Professor William Lane Craig, who is a, uh, intelligent design advocate and against the idea of evolution on scientific grounds while he agrees that the idea of evolution can be plausible can be a uh, an idea that's worthy at least to people of belief he did make one thing one comment concerning the scientific implications of evolution and honestly when he made this at the Christopher Hitchens debate and I think it was at Biola University he made a very good point, and I think it got Christopher Hitchens to think about it. So any doubts that I would have about the theory of biological evolution would be not biblical, uh, but rather scientific. Namely, what it imagines is fantastically improbable. Barrow and Tipler, two physicists in their book, The Anthropic Cosmological Principle, list 10 steps in the course of human evolution each of which is so improbable that before it would occur, the sun would have ceased to be a main sequence star and incinerated the earth. And they calculate the probability of the evolution of the human genome between, to be somewhere between four 
to the negative 180th power to the 110,000th power and 4 to the negative 360th power to the 110,000th power. So if evolution did occur on this planet, it was literally a miracle and therefore evidence for the existence of God. <laughs> so I don't think this is an argument for atheism, quite the contrary. It really provides good grounds for thinking that God superintended the process of biological development. So the Christian can be open to the evidence to follow it where it leads. By contrast, as Alvin Plantinga has said, for the uh, naturalist, evolution is the only game in town. No matter how fantastic the odds, no matter how improbable, it's got to be true because there is no intelligent creator and designer. So in one sense, you've got to feel a little sorry for the atheist. He can't really follow the evidence where it leads. His presuppositions determine the outcome. So why should we take a perfectly good Bible, which has never been proven wrong, and compromise it with a stupid theory that's never been proven right? Everything about evolution is backwards to the Bible. Every single thing. Nothing matches. You can look at the chart there and see everything's backwards. The Bible says man brought death into the world. Evolution says death brought man into the world. The Bible says God created man. Evolution says man created God. Does evolution match the Bible? Absolutely not. Well, I don't think the idea of a... Uh Earth that's rotating on its axis, or the Earth being in the um, being not in the center of the universe, and the fact that the Earth revolves around the Sun, uh, those aren't in the Bible. In fact, it says that the Earth shall never move, and it rests upon its pillars and foundations. So there was a different view of reading that, and now we, without a doubt, th know that it says that. Uh, you know, that those are just metaphors and, liter and a sense of literature. Just because Scripture says a certain thing doesn't l have to literally mean it. Muslims are using this tactic that you're implying when they go to Luke chapter 19, verse 27, to say Jesus wants us to go out and kill people, where the parable, it's the ending of a parable where a king is basically telling his followers that if he telling them to bring the king's enemies before him so that he could kill them. A lot of people believe that this king is Jesus and that Jesus wants us to go and bring people to slaughter. So this is where we get the extremists of violence that advocate that we need to kill for Jesus. It is a heresy to teach God used evolution. And a heresy is something against the clear teaching of scripture. And I think there are people who are heretics today. Yes, it is a, if it's a clear teaching of scripture, then, you know, it's perfectly clear that the earth does, you know, the earth uh, does not move, so it doesn't revolve. Um, and it's also clear that Jesus tells us to go kill people. And it's also, by the way, very clear that uh, the lots of people died because God commanded it to. God commanded the flood. God commanded uh, the slaughterings of the Amalekites and all those people. I don't agree with the idea of there being an actual just standing still earth and everything revolves around it. But I do agree that it is just for God to go and drown the people with the flood. And it was just of him to kill the Amalekites. It was just of him to send his son Jesus Christ. And it was just for those animals to die as our atonement. So, hopefully, Kent, that you, tr would, if you, if you see this video when you get out, hopefully I would like to see what your responses are, because I'm concerned that I would like to learn a little more on what your views are consisting of this particular view, because I remember in one debate, you said that someone can be saved and be a Christian uh, while believing in evolution. I remember this was in a debate you had with some guy named Callahan, which was a terrible opponent from the beginning since all he did was quote and advertise his website during the entire debate. But, yes. So, that's my video and that's my whole point and argument. So, until then, Shalom Aleichem. Peace be upon you, because I wish that upon you. Subscribe to this channel. You know why? Because he's the cream of the crop. If you're the cream, you gotta subscribe. Dig it!